recording. Yes. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, I am Kelly Dolman, I'm the chair of the Restoration Industry Association's annual convention committee. Uh, this year, we are celebrating 75 years in the industry. So we're uh, doing some history for everyone to keep everyone in the know about where our industry has been and hopefully getting a peek at where we're going. So today I am talking to Patty Harmon, who some of you will know from the Patricia L. Harmon Golden Quill Award. So she's gonna give us a little bit of the history of that award. So I will kick it right over to you, Patty. How are you doing today? Oh, I am doing great, keeping very busy. Well, it is wonderful to see you. Thank you for giving us the time. Um, so I think to get us started, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about you know, who you are, what you're up to these days and what your history is with the RIA. Well, I am the Editor-in-Chief of the Property Casualty Group at ALM, and I oversee our PropertyCasualty360.com website, Claims Magazine, and National Underwriter Property and Casualty. And I actually came here from RIA in 2014 um, after I started working with the organization in various capacities. So I started at with RIA, actually it was ASCR in 1995. Wow. <clears throat> really date me. <laughs> <laughs> the original initials. <laughs> yes, I started, at, actually it was AIDS before it was ASCR. That's right, that's right. So I started as a freelance editor for CNR Magazine and eventually I became involved in helping them plan the annual convention. And then I came on staff and I started handling the marketing and communications. I rebranded the association from ASCR to RIA. And then I added standards development to my plate. And by the time I left, I was one of the co-executive directors of RIA. So I kind of did a little bit of everything while I was there. And it's funny because when I started with ASCR, I remember thinking, I am never gonna learn everything I need to know for this job. <laughs> the time I left, I had a little bit more knowledge and I had a lot of great friends. Oh, so you experience. have done everything. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell me the history of the Golden Quill Award and particularly how your name ended up getting attached to it. So the magazine started in the 1970s as The Voice and the Golden Quill Award was first presented in the mid to late 70s. Um, Right around the same time, RIA also changed its name from AIDS to ASCR, and the magazine became Cleaning and Restoration somewhere in the 1980s, and then under my tenure, I changed it to CNR probably somewhere in like the early 2000s, so, um, and the, you asked me about the, how the Golden Quill changed its name, so that actually happened in 2014. It was the last convention that I attended as a staff member. And it was a total surprise. Uh -huh. it, you know, it was just a very sweet way to officially leave the organization. And periodically I remind my current bosses, you know, well, you know, I do have a journalism award named after me. <laughs> <laughs> but really, I was just incredibly honored. I love the restoration industry and what RIA members do is just so important. And I just really tried to raise the level of what we produce with the magazine. And so to have those efforts recognized in this way is just such a privilege. Oh, that's lovely. So what did, when you were, when you were running the show and you were deciding the winners, um, what did you look for in an article? What were the qualifications of somebody who was quill worthy? Well, there were certain things that I wanted to look for. And it's funny because I was the one who kind of developed the qualifications. When I took it over, I, let's just say the process was a little fluid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I actually ended up handling the nomination process for several of, of RIA's awards. And so what I did was I standardized the criteria to make it easier for the judges so that everyone was measured against the same criteria. I am the oldest of four girls. So treating everyone equally, um, is kind of ingrained in my DNA. <laughs> <So basically, laughs> what we want, or the things that I wanted people to consider were, does the article help restorers better serve their clients and improve their business? Is the information provided relevant to the topic and to the industry? And is the article well thought out and well written? 
And a couple of other things that I wanted to make sure were important was that the winner had to be an RIA member and the article couldn't be ghosted by a PR person or some other professional writer because it's not, the, it's not fair, again, <laughs> to put someone who is a professional writer against someone who is doing this in their spare time because they're busy serving their clients and doing other things. So I wanted to make sure that we really recognized people who actually wrote the articles. And I know this, the RIA staff would laugh at me because I would look under a Word doc, you can always look to see who created it. And, and like, that's the sort of thing I would do. And maybe that explains my um, deep interest in covering insurance fraud now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, that's adorable. So it, it carried through your ability yes. to get really yep. see through there, that journalism background really. Yes, it does. <laughs> right. So you said you believed it was 2014, it became Patricia yes. L. Harmon Golden Quill right. Award. Yeah. Yep. And did you, were you able to present the first one? Um, yes, I was. Actually, I came back the next year and I came back and I was able to, to present it. And I don't think I've been back to present it since then. So my schedule didn't quite work out. Wow. Yeah. That's lovely. Well, you're always welcome. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, and how, how does it feel to now, you mentioned you, you like to throw it at your bosses every once in a while that you have an award named after you, but how, how does it feel to know every year that your name comes up and associated with this, this event? Well, like I said, it's just, it really is such an honor. And I've actually spoken with um, some of the award winners and they've told me what it's meant to them to win the award because they knew me as the editor of CNR. So I think there's just a really special connection there when that happens, but it just, it's definitely something that makes me smile. And, and I just, I just really appreciate that opportunity. It's kind of a, a way to still kind of make my mark, even though I'm, I'm not there all the time. <laughs> yeah. And do you still get to be involved? Do they do they still reach um, out to you come selection time? Sometimes they do. They haven't for the last two years, but okay. before then, yes, I was involved. And and I it was I would look at and it was funny because I would read through the through the different um, articles and I get ah oh, yeah this is the one. And then I would always wait for them to tell me, okay, so who really won it? <laughs> <laughs> so I got pretty good at picking the winners though. So. Nice, nice. A little side bet going on. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, so one of the things I'm, I'm trying to help, you know, get people educated about is that, uh, yes, professional writers write articles and that's what they do and they're really good at it, but you don't have to be a professional yeah. writer to write yeah. in our industry and to be respected and well-read and have great thoughts and ideas. So what would your advice be to someone who is just trying to start their writing career or have the goal of getting that golden quill? Uh, what would you advise them to do? I've actually had the privilege of working with a lot of people that were in that position and just encouraging them to write. So I would, I would recommend that they write about something that matters to the industry. Think about what helps them work smarter to keep their people safer improves and educates the industry and basically just makes it better for everybody. Because when you write from that perspective, that's what will make people care and be interested to hear what you have to say, I think. That's lovely. Um, that's a lovely thought. Write about what what's going to make a difference for others. Uh, I think often that's why that's why ASCR was started because they wanted to improve the industry. And so that carries through with the information that you all share with your readers and with the rest of the industry. So. Thank you. That is, that's wonderful. That's, <laughs> that's so great. And I, the history lesson, the, the all your knowledge <laughs> has been amazing today. So um, thank you so much for, for what you have done and, and continue to do oh, for the RIA. Um, like I said, we get to talk about you every year and it's truly a delight. <laughs> My heart is really with this industry. It's funny. I um, I have always told my daughter, um, who was also kind of a natural born leader, I said, you have to use your powers for good. And in my position as the editor in chief of claims and now PC360, I have tried to use that position to educate the insurance industry about the restoration industry 
and what you all do and what a critical role you play and how it's great that they can write the check, but when it comes down to getting a policyholder or an insured back into their house or the business, it's the restoration companies that do that. So yeah. I just, you know, I just want to make sure that other people know how wonderful you all you all are. <laughs> Oh, you are a heart melter. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, so that has been our chat with Patty, our history lesson and getting to see the beauty of the Golden Quills creation. So thank you again for your time today and hope to see you at the next show. Okay, thanks. Thanks. All right, let me just stop recording.